What's up guys, welcome back to Libertalia Game Supply. This week our deck profile is going to be G Golem, Cybers, Spam. Uh, it's just a huge Link Summoning mess right here. It was originally going to be just a G Golem deck with a little bit of Cyber support, uh, but what happened was G Golems just don't really do that much on their own. You need Cyber support to make them good. And then once I started going down that rabbit hole and discovered this super broken card, uh, I figured it'd be nice to just blend Code Talkers and G Golems together. together. Uh, and it makes for a pretty fun and interesting deck, so I'll explain that all to you here. Uh, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, like, you know, whatever. Let me know you want to see more of it, but we'll get into this. So we got the double Rock Hammer. Rock Hammer is just, it's not a very good card on its own. You would discard a card to make it a level 4 in hand, which means you could then normal summon it without a tribute. It's on the field, you contribute it uh, for 3 G Golem tokens, so it's just 3 tokens that you're going to use to link summon with so it's essentially a plus one and then if you happen to be able to discard something that is a plus for you like dot scaper uh this guy here uh it can be a plus two and just lets you set up some link plays pretty easily uh pebble dog is a similar concept so when it's normal or special summoned it can normal or special summon another copy of itself from your deck that's why we play three uh, if you happen to draw into two of them the one in your deck is still alive it can't special summon the extra one out of your hand so that kind of sucks but there are a few discard outlets in this deck, so even if you ha happen to draw extra copies of cards that you can't really use right now or don't need, uh, they just end up becoming discard fodder. So that's the triple pebble dog. And then the triple widget kid just goes really nice with the G Golem stuff. So if it's normal or special summoned, you can special summon a Cybers monster from your hand in defense position. Uh, and that's your entire deck. We don't play anything that isn't Cybers in the main or the extra deck. So it can summon anything out of your entire deck from your hand. The things that this pairs nicely with are the G Golems because they still get their effects. So like, if you normaled, specialed, this thing can then special summon another one. And if you normal and specialed, you contribute this for three tokens. So you're going to get between uh, three and four Link materials on board just by having a combination of the Widget Kid with one of these. And then Dotscaper for a first Earth target, and I'll explain the target thing in a second as we get down towards the end. But Dotscaper, if it's sent to the graveyard, it can special special summon itself to your field. Uh, and then if it's banished, it can special summon itself to your field. It's once per dual effects on each. Uh, and so that's why we only play the one, but it's a good one of for sure, especially with some of these discard outlets like Cyanite Mining and Rock Hammer. It just goes extra plus when you use them in combination. Then we got the one code generator. Code generator acts as link material out of your hand if you're summoning a code talker, which is what a lot of these code monsters, they're in there because of that effect. They can act as link material in your hand so you don't have to find a way to summon them. And then if you use it as a link material out of your hand, he can foolish burial a cybers monster with 1200 or less attack from your deck to the graveyard. So, you know, you could send the Dotscaper or send other stuff for deck thinning or whatever. If you happen to summon it and then link summon with it instead uh, off the field instead of out of your hand, you can add that monster that you would Foolish Burial to your hand instead of sending it to the graveyard, but that is fairly irrelevant. Then we got the one Gachiri at, at Ignister, so this thing can special summon itself out of the hand. Uh, if you target a Cybers monster, you control and negate its effects. Typically the use for that would be you know, you're going to have some nothing monster whose effect's already been burned or you don't need. You're going to negate that thing's effects and not one of your link monsters that you want to stay on board. And then summon it and you've got an extra body on board to link someone with. Also, when it gets uh, sent to the graveyard, you can target a face-up monster you control. That target is unaffected by your opponent's card effects until the end of your opponent's turn. So it can give temporary protection to one of your uh, link monsters that doesn't have it built in on its own. So just another nice one of. For our wins, we've got the code exporter so similar to code generator this thing can act as a link material out of your hand for a code talker monster and then if it's used out of your hand as a link material it can take one of your level four lower cybers monsters in your graveyard and add it back to your hand or if it was on the field which once again is unlikely you can special summon that monster out of the graveyard instead but negate its effects once again just here because it's link material that acts as link material in your hand uh link infra flyer this thing can special summon itself to a zone of link monster points too only reason it's in here it's just an extender uh, next the double parallel exceed you could probably fit a third one in here somehow i just didn't want to cut any of the stuff that i had right now but having the three would be a similar concept to having the three of these the only reason i didn't is because even if you draw both of them and you get stuck with them both in your hand and you don't have access to its effect to special summon the spare copy out of your deck uh, you can still summon 
the extra one out of your hand through a Link Summon on the following turn or whatever, so it didn't feel as bad to play a 2 instead of 3, and like I said, I just didn't want to cut one card in here in order to make room for the third copy because it didn't feel like it was all that valuable. And then triple micro coder, so this thing is at 3 where the rest of them are at 1 or 2 because it's kind of essential uh, to being able to get your deck started. So it acts as a link material out of your hand like all the other code monsters. And then if it's used in that way where you link summon with it out of your hand, it lets you search a uh, sign at spell or trap. And so obviously we play the triple mining, the triple codec, and the one conflict. Uh, and this is in here to search that Cyanet codec, and then the other ones are secondary if you already have the codec in hand. But this thing's so good in this deck, uh, we want to get to it as fast as possible, so that's why we're playing the triple micro coder. We want to have access to that search as, as quickly as we can get it. And then if it's used on the field as link material, it can search a level 4 Cybers monster instead of the spell, but we really want the spell, so we're not looking for that. And then we got the one cross debug, so this is another extender card. Uh, if you control two or more link monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. So it's pretty much just there as a body. If it's in the graveyard and your link monster battles an opponent's link monster, you can banish this out of your graveyard, target a link monster in your graveyard. Your link monster on the field can't be destroyed by battle. And then until the end of the turn, it gains attack equal to the target in the graveyard's attack, which just will most of the time boost them up to being not beat overable very easily. So it's got that little extra effect, that's why we chose this one over something else, and it's a pretty cool card. It's just an extender really, but the fact that it's got something extra that it does after being that is nice. And we got the one Scripton, this is like a kind of like a chaos type monster, so you can banish a Cybers monster out of your graveyard to special summon this thing. Uh, it's a level 5, so you can't normal summon it, but it's just an extender and it's water. We want to have access to all of the uh, attributes in this deck. And then if it's used as a link material for a Cybers link monster, which you only have, it can take one of your banished ones and then put it back in your deck. So not super relevant most of the time, it's just a little bit of something else, but really what we want them for is that chaos effect to be able to special summon himself by banishing something out of your graveyard, because uh, that graveyard will fill up really fast. Then we play the Math Mech Engine, so I've got the two fire, the addition and subtraction. These guys are extenders also, they special summon themselves uh, out of the hand by either adding or subtracting a thousand attack from a monster you control. Uh, and so really, you're just going to be adding or subtracting attack of one of the, you know, whatever monsters that you're going to link away anyway and then link someone with them. Uh, and then we've got the Circular and the Sigma, just for that little starting play. I suppose I could cut the Sigma to 1 and then you would be able to bump the Exceed to 2. Uh, but Sigma just seems like kind of a better card, I guess. If you don't know, Circular can special summon itself from the hand if you control no, no extra monster zone monsters. So turn one, ideally, is when you're opening this thing. That's why it's at three. Activate its effect by sending this to the graveyard and special summoning this. Uh, then this thing's effect can special summon itself out of the graveyard. And then this gets a, another effect where when one of your math mechs is normal or special summoned, it can search a math mech spell, uh, which is the math mech equation that we've got right here, which is just a monster reborn for math mechs. So this one monster can be a link three monster, essentially, which is kind of the theme of the whole deck is just to try to make as many link materials as possible, build it up into a board of like essentially like link 15 by the end of a turn and then pass with a bunch of huge monsters on board. Uh, and then the one backup secretary, just because it's also a extender that is a light specific, uh, and we don't have another light extender in the deck. These are more starters uh, and combo pieces. This is the extender. So if you control a Cybers, you can special summon this card from your hand, uh, and it's a light type. And so now the reason why that matters, all right, we got the one equation. We've got the one called by equations of Monster Reborn that is searchable. Called by is just to protect from hand traps. Uh, the three sign at mining is to discard and then search a level four or lower, so it's just a rota essentially for cybers. The only reason you would use this is if you're specifically trying to get like say micro coder because you want to get that search for the Cyanet codec. And then the Cyanet codec is the reason we play the deck. So how Cyanet codec work is, works is it's a continuous spell. You put it on board. Uh, anytime you summon a code talker, you can search a cybers monster with the same attribute from your deck and add it to your hand but you can only do it once per attribute per turn. So essentially, if you were able to make uh, six different attribute code talker monsters, which we do play, uh, you can search six different Cybers monsters from your deck that turn just off of this. So that's why we have a lot of one-ofs in this deck. So we've got you know the one-of Wind Extender, 
the one of earth extenders, the one of dark, water, fire, and then light extenders. Uh, that's the whole reason for all of it, is just so that you get those searches, and those searches turn into additional bodies and additional link summons. This thing is so good, uh, just by being able to search everything, because the deck is so reliably capable of making link monsters to get the de the, the engine rolling. Uh, and so this is the whole reason I decided I wanted to play this version of the deck, is because having this amount of searching power is just unbelievable honestly you got to try it and see what it feels like it's ridiculous like if any other deck that was a little bit better had something like this it would be unbeatable all right and then we got the one sign at conflict so this is just an in archetype uh solemn warning essentially so if a spell trap or monster effect is activated will you control a code talker monster you can negate the activation of that card with this and then banish that card uh, and if you do that card uh, our cards with that same name can't be activated, so if you're negating something that is not once per turn that your opponent might have multiple copies of, you're shutting that down for a turn. It's really just a, a searchable negate trap, so it's kind of good. And then Triple Rivalry of Warlord. This thing just fits really well in this deck because there's not a single monster in the deck that isn't a Cybers monster. Other decks may not have that luxury of not having to worry about a rivalry, so we play it to take advantage of that. Obviously, if you ended up in a situation where they also had that same, like, everything is within the same type, you would just side this out, but game one it feels like a pretty good first turn, like, trap card, floodgate to have in this deck. Uh, and then for the extra deck, it's mostly code talkers, it's all cybers. So one Lingaribo, the one Trigate Wizard, uh, the one G Golem Crystal Heart, Stubborn Men here, and Invalid Dolmen. These were kind of, this card in specific was why I wanted to play G Golems in the first place, just because I like the artwork and it's got kind of a cool effect. But essentially what you would do if you were going to try to combo line with this, this stuff right here is, uh, you would get two materials, two earth monsters, uh, link them away for this, and then ideally the deck does something that puts another material on board for you. You would link this and that extra material away for the Crystal Heart. Use the Crystal Heart to special summon this back. This will special summon back one of your monsters in your graveyard. And then you would link this and this away, or I'm sorry, this and that monster away to make the Invalid Dolmen, uh, which you would want connected to your Crystal Heart if possible, because co-linked monsters are unaffected by monster effects activated on your opponent's field. All monsters your opponent controls that can attack must attack this card. And then once per turn, you can discard a Cybers monster to draw one. And then if this co-linked card is destroyed, you can negate the effect of all face-up cards your opponent currently controls. So it protects the Crystal Heart, which has zero attack until you start putting uh, the G Golem tokens on it. Which you get whenever you use this effect to special summon something back. So it got the one token when you pulled this back. And then when you link this up and co-link them, this guy goes up by uh, 600 attack as well as this. So this would have 600 attack also. So this guy becomes a... 3400 attack beater that protects your field and uh, draws all attacks to itself So it's just kind of a cool little play you can do and it's very easy to make that happen uh, So that's what these three in here do and then for our code talker So we play the one inverted this guy can special summon a cybers monster from your hand to a zone it points to which is pretty useful uh, and it's light, so it would search your backup se secretary or your circular. Probably not the circular, because you won't be able to use its effect at that point. The one end code talker, I only play it because it's another light uh, code talker monster. I don't, I've not really used it at all. You could cut it. It doesn't matter because you already have your light target. But for like turn two, you probably still would be better off just playing two of this thing rather than this thing. The one X code talker, it's the only wind code talker monster, so we gotta play it. But it is also okay when you summon it, it can shut off uh, monster zones, main monster zones, up to the number of extra monster zones that are occupied, so two. And so you're going to have one already when this thing gets summoned, so you can just shut off one monster zone. It's probably not super relevant unless you're playing a very specific type of a deck or you're late in the game or something, but... You know, whatever. It does something at least, and it's a win target. Decode Talker Heat Soul. This is not the only fire code talker, but is absolutely the best one. So it's a link three, games 500 attack for each monster it's pointing to. It's got an up arrow, and then the down and uh, left and right down arrows. And then it's got an effect where you can spend a thousand as a quick effect to draw one. And then if your life points are 2,000 or less, you can banish this card from the field and special summon a link three or lower Cybers monster from your extra deck. So not from the graveyard, it can just grab a Link 3 from your extra deck and put it on the field. Uh, and that quick effect is kind of cool because you get the extra draw on your turn and your opponent's turn. Uh, the extra attack can be okay too if you put it in the 
the main monsters or the extra monster zone instead of a main monster zone. You can just choose to make it gain a thousand attacks, so it becomes 3300 beater. Uh, that gets you draw power on your turn and your opponent's turn, so just a pretty nutty card. Uh, then for our water target, we've got Shooting Code Talker. So it's a Link 3, and this is definitely a less usable effect, but it can be used if you're going to like try to play specifically to use its effect. Uh, so when it battles, it can make attacks up to the number of monsters it points to, plus one. So if it points to one monster, you get two attacks, two monsters, you get three. Uh, really, there's no way for you to get more than that, unless I'm not understanding how the board would be put together. But So at most, it can make three attacks. If at one point it's attacking a monster that is your opponent's last monster, it'll lose 400 attacks, so it would go down to 1900, but you have some attack manipulation effects within the deck, so you might be able to make it a little bit uh, bigger than that. Uh, and then at the end of the battle phase, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters this card destroyed by battle this turn. So it's additional draw power, and it can kind of clear a board a little bit. The only reason I don't think it's as good is because 2300 attack isn't that big, so you would definitely have to be going out of your way to try to play two this monster's effect to like reduce attacks on the board or whatever in order to make that super useful or super busted. And then we got double trans code talker. This is the earth code talker. Uh, and this one's probably one of the better code talkers other than probably access code, I would say. So this guy can summon from your graveyard a link three or lower monster to a zone it points to, which is what we use it for. So you would link summon up to whatever. Uh, if you already had a Link 3 in the graveyard, it just puts another Link 3 on your board, which is usually just useful because it's going to be a uh, like a 3 Link rating for the Link Summon of one of your 4s, so your Axis Code or your Firewall Dragon, uh, which is just really good. So that's what we use it for. Then we got the one Code Talker, so this thing is a Dark Link 2. The reason it's in here is because it's dark, which the only other one is Axis Code, which is a Link 4 and meant to be like an end board monster. Uh, and it's got the up and down arrows, so the down arrow specifically is what matters because it's very common that this is the first Link monster I'll make in a turn. Uh, and you need that down arrow in order, in order to take advantage of something like a Parallel Exceed that needs a Link arrow pointing to a monster zone for you to be able to use its effect. Uh, and so that's what this thing's in here for. You know, if the uh, Code Talker Inverted had the up and down arrows instead of the left and right, this would be what you play at two instead and not play this at all. But unfortunately, we don't have that option. Uh, so it will be this. Also under Cyanet Codec, it can get you this cross debug, which is one of your better extenders in the deck. Uh, so pretty decent all around. Then the one access code, you guys know what this thing does. It's just a big beefy monster. Uh, banish or uh, target a Link monster when it gets summoned to make him, you know, five to six thousand attack or something like that. And then you can banish Link monsters out of your graveyard to start popping stuff. So also just a beast in this deck because you're going to banish so many different Link monsters. You can use his effect a couple of times uh, to clear out a board and then just be a big beat down card. And then Firewall Dragon, this could be something else, but I just really wanted to play Firewall Dragon. I didn't have one when it was a big uh, expensive card and everybody was playing it with its non-eroded effect and just destroying people. Uh, I finally was able to get one well after that day, and so now I wanted a reason to play it, and so this is the perfect deck to play it in. It's a compulse essentially, probably for one, maybe for two if you can make that board be co-link centric, you know, really focus on using that firewall dragon effect, and then you get that special summon to uh, replace things that die that it's pointing to, so uh, uh, still a good card, you can't loop it in the same way that you could previously, but it's still a really, really good card, and it fits really nicely into this deck, so there's the extra deck. As far as the stuff down here, these are all just like additional potential search targets for Cyanet Codec that I decided not to use. And for the most part, they all have the same idea in mind. So they're going to be like, here, I'll just hover them over them uh, quickly once each. So they're going to either have an effect that is meant to uh, be an extender, so it can special summon to a link zone, or it can special summon itself by like banishing stuff like the Grey Buster, or this thing will banish a random card from your extra deck, which sucks in this deck because you want all of your extra deck, and that's why this is not in there. Uh, these guys are more like Cyber Dragons. Uh, but for the most part, they're all just extenders or like, this is a searcher, but I don't want the normal summons because they don't do anything after you've already gotten your effects going. And then this thing, I don't know, you could probably play this at one just for fun. So you special summon it by banishing eight or more link monsters with different names on the field or and, and or in your graveyard. And, and then it's just a massive compulse, so it can't be negated. It wipes the whole board other than itself. And so it's like a board reset and it's got 3,500 attack. And so it'd be more of like a 
win more like super funny card that you could play in here but i probably wouldn't play it outside of that i guess the reason you could play it as a one of is because it would still be searchable off of Cyanet Codec when you summon this thing, and you can very easily put eight Link Monsters on the field or in the graveyard to be able to summon it. Uh, so it would be kind of funny, but uh, obviously doesn't fit within the structure of the deck necessarily. It's just able to be made and funny. So if you try it out, let me know if you like it. And then these were just other spells that I was considering playing uh, over the call by the Monster Reborn just being an extender card, and then the one for one can search your Dotscaper. Or I guess Microcoder if you wanted to just put a body on board and you already had the Dotscaper in hand or something. At which point you would discard the Dotscaper with the one for one, get the monster on field, uh, and then get the Dotscaper on field and you have two. But the reason it's not in there is because there's not enough level one targets that you benefit from actually just summoning to your board. So yeah, that'll wrap up this G Golem Code Talker Cyber Spam deck. It's been super fun. I'm at building this one in real life now, actually, just because of how fun and cheap it is. I think everything in the deck is like maybe a dollar or two other than the access code, which is like 20 to 30 right now with all of its recent reprints. So very, very cheap deck to build. If you're looking for something that can, uh, you know, perform at a local level, you could probably get away with cheese and some wins that you shouldn't otherwise be getting at uh, a low if you built an actual side deck. This is not an actual side deck, I will reiterate. These are just other options if you wanted to play something else, um, but I, the ones in here are the ones I picked to be in here because they are the easiest to use as extenders. But let me know what you think of the deck down below if there's something you want to see next week. I'm thinking Doodle Morphia is what I'm going to try to work on, so a Dino Morphia with the Doodle Beasts in it. Uh, so if that sounds stupid, let me know. I'm still going to make it either way, but I'd still like to hear your opinion. Uh, subscribe if you like this stuff. Let me know if there's anything else you want to tell me in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy deck building. Peace.